So let's go ahead and get into this next segment, which is talking about Rudy Gay announcing his retirement. And he has played um, 17 seasons and um, had stints with five different teams in the NBA. And he announced his retirement in an article of the Players' Tribune, writing how he feels like the luckiest man in the world for all that he was able to accomplish on the court. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this article that he wrote, and I'm going to read it. So he said, well, he wrote, excuse me, when you make an announcement like this one, you can't keep it a secret from literally everyone. It's impossible. You're going to have your people you tell early, whether it's your dad, your wife, your best buddies from grade school. There's always going to be people who know you're retiring before the world does, and those people, they love you. They know that turning the page is probably pretty scary, so they kind of check in on you. It's like, oh wow, congrats, big decision, are you okay? That makes you pause and take a stock on everything you know. It makes you think about where you came from and everyone you've learned lessons from over the years. The special moments, the friendships, everything comes to the mind in a flash. But with me, something else would happen too. Every time someone asked me, are you okay, after I told them the news, my mind would immediately go to a very specific place, back to one of my all-time NBA moments, me and Kobe Bryant going at each other inside Staples Center back in 2013. Kobe's one of the main guys I learned for advice after I tore my Achilles in 2017. He helped me so much back then, and I'm forever grateful but four years before that, Kobe and I were fresh off the USA basketball camp out in Vegas. During those camps, guys spend a ton of time together, so you form some close bonds. And this game in LA was one of the first times that we played against each other after Vegas. Before tip-off, we see each other, and it's all love. It's like, what's up, Kobe? What's up, Rudy? Super chill. And then the game starts, and at one point, Kobe... He decides to switch on to me in the post. I was a lot taller than him, but he's Kobe Bryant. He doesn't care. So he comes at me like it's nothing. I start backing him down, and he tries to stand me up. Of course, I'm like, come on, bro. And I go right at him, like all out. And as I do that, he reaches around, and well, I kind of slam my shoulder right into his head. Bam. And Kobe goes down hard. When he gets up, I look at him and notice dude's bleeding a little bit. We're boys, and I know, and now I have him out here on this court bleeding. Yo, Kobe, I say, Kobe, are you okay? And he says nothing. I mean, if you guys know anything about Kobe Bryant, I mean, he barely says anything in the game. He is just l super stupidly locked in. It's un it's unbelievable. And he continues saying, he continues writing, doesn't react at all. Maybe he didn't hear me, or did I f up his eardrum? or something when I hit him. Can Kobe not hear now? What did I do? So play continues, but at the other end, someone knocks the ball out of bounds and something and there's stoppage or, or something and there's stoppage. I woke over to Kobe like, Kobe, Kobe, you all right? Nothing. He's just swaying back and forth now. It's crazy, just swaying in place. His eyes looking off in the distance somewhere. Next possession, we're on the offense again and there's a foul. Okay, enough. I'm standing right next to him at the foul line like, I gotta see if Kobe can hear. Kobe, 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 are you okay, man? A second passes, then another. Then he turns his head in my direction and looks at me, blank stare. Kobe, I know I got you with the shoulder a little bit. Are you okay? A few more seconds pass, like awkward, awkward seconds. Then he looks straight into my soul with those eyes of his and real slow and pronounced, he says, don't you ever ask me, am I okay? It was the coldest, cold-blooded thing ever. And then he didn't say another word. We just went back to the game. It was the middle of the third quarter or so. And as you probably guess, Kobe roasted us after that. Dude scored 24 points after it happened. He hit three threes in the final two minutes of the game to send it to overtime. And then in OT, of course, the Lakers got the win. An hour later, he's on Sports Center or whatever, and they're asking him about all those points he scored at the end. And he's literally like, yeah, I mean, Rudy Gay asked me if I was okay. So no joke, dead serious. That's what he says on TV. Then he smiles this sly little smile. I'm just shaking my head watching that like, you know what? 
In, retrospre in retrospect, maybe I shouldn't have asked him if he was okay. Lesson learned. Kobe taught me all about focus that day, about how even though they call it a game, hoops isn't really a game. You're trying to be the best player in the world. And you know what? Sitting here now, knowing that my NBA days are over, I'm absolutely convinced that was, that that the coolest thing about putting up 18 years in the league is all those moments like that one with Kobe Bryant. I've been beyond fortunate to experience so much in the game and so on my way out, I really just want to tell a few of my favorite stories and shout out some folks who have been especially meaningful to me. And he continues going on uh, with the story. And honestly, if I were to keep reading all of this, we would be here forever because Rudy Gay, again, 17 seasons in the NBA, 18 seasons. I mean, he had a very long career, and I guarantee that he has a lot of stories with that as well. And his last appearance in an NBA game was for the Utah Jazz on March 2022 in, um, not, not 2022, in March 22nd on 2023. And he first put himself on the national radar during his two seasons at um, Connecticut for 2004 and 2006, he was named Big East Rookie of the Year as a freshman and earned a first-team All-American honors during his sophomore campaign. In fact, while Rudy Gay in the NBA might not have been like you know your star caliber player like most um, stars that you guys are familiar with, he is that one guy that almost every basketball fan knows. Like he's there's something about him. That is just like that everyone immediately knows who you're talking about and everyone's like, yeah, he's cold, like he's really good. Even though he might not be a star or he might not have been a star in his time in the NBA, people know who he is and people recognize who he is. It's, it's just, it's one of those like, um, it's one of those role players that everyone knows and is like, um, is fond of their game. Similar to like Jamal Crawford, how, you know, we remember when in his time with, you know, the Knicks, he was a starter. Then later on, he became a clipper and was a six man. But despite being a six man, a lot of people still know how cold Jamal Crawford actually is. And he's one of those players like that, if um, if that puts it into any sort of perspective. And he, as, as you guys know, he played for UConn, and his title hopes in the 2005-2006 season were dashed during George Mason's Cinderella run in the NCAA tournament. Gay did everything in his power to get the Huskies into the Final Four with 20 points and 6 rebounds in 42 minutes, but Connecticut fell 86-84 to in that overtime game. So then he declared for the draft in 2006 and was selected number eight overall by the Houston Rockets, who traded his rights over to the Memphis Grizzlies, and he spent the first seven seasons of his career with Memphis. In the 2010 to 2011 season, um, the Grizzlies won their first playoff series in franchise history, defeating the 61-win San Antonio Spurs in six games. Then Memphis traded Gay all the way over to Toronto midway through the 2012-2013 season, where he was traded again early in the 2013-2014 season to the Kings, who, would, who he would play with for the next four years. Then he missed most of the 2016-2017 season and the start of the 2017-2018 season due to a torn Achilles. He had a four-year run with the Spurs from 2017 to 18 to all the way to 2020 and 2021, then closed out his career with the Jazz for two seasons. Golden State signed Gay to a one-year deal in September 2023. He averaged two points per game on 33% shooting from the three-point line in two appearances before being waived as part of their final preseason roster cuts. He, in total for his career, Rudy Gay appeared in 1,139 games between the regular season and the playoffs. He averaged 15.8 points per game, 45% shooting, 5 rebounds, and 1.1 steals per game as well. And that's really like, you know, th that sums up essentially the career of Rudy Gay and his time in the NBA. And we're, we're really starting... To, um, to reach that era of basketball where a lot of the old players and a lot of like the players that I grew up watching are starting to um, are starting to retire and it's a really sad day but 
Uh, there, there's also some good news that happens with all of these old folks retiring. It means that we get younger players that could end up being even better than some of these um, older players that have played a long career in the NBA. And that's something that I'm really, really excited. Mm. That's something that I'm really excited for. While there is no more LeBron, there is Luka Doncic, who I could argue is one of the closest players to LeBron, not the closest. I actually think Giannis, if there was anyone close to LeBron, Giannis would be the one closest to LeBron. He has the offense, he has the defense, he has the facilitating, and he has the incredible finishing around the basket, just like LeBron James. Doesn't really have a shot, though, but aside from that, he still gets his production. And really, it's, you know, the fact that LeBron's career, honestly, like since we are on the topic of LeBron, the fact that LeBron is still playing and Rudy Gay ended up retiring and Rudy Gay was drafted bef- like after Bronny w- LeBron was drafted is kind of insane. And speaking of LeBron, we might as well go ahead and go into our break and go into the third segment where we talk about the Lakers game and between the Phoenix Suns, the Lakers ended up losing. So I will go ahead and talk about that right after this short break. So be sure to stay tuned. Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without having to pay for it? GSMC Sports Network is available on YouTube. Just search GSMC Sports Network. Get your fix of daily sports talk shows on YouTube absolutely free. NFL, college football, NBA, MLB, MMA, UFC, fantasy football, and so much more. GSMC Sports Network has shows running all day long with new sports shows starting every two hours. Just like on your favorite cable sports channel, except GSMC Sports Network is absolutely free. Just search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube to catch one of your new favorite shows, like the GSMC College Football Podcast, Chip Shot Football Podcast, Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast, GSMC Basketball Podcast, and so many more. Check it out for yourself. GSMC Sports Network, now available on YouTube absolutely free. Search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube right now. 